Welcome to the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us for online worship on this third weekend in the Advent season, which is the Advent Week of Peace. Whether you're a member or a friend of this faith community, or you're joining us for the first time for worship today, we're glad that you've joined us. My name is Amanda Hinthorne, and I'm the Director of Christian Education, and it's a blessing for us to be able to gather together in this way. If this is your first time worshiping with SPUMC, we want to let you know that we extend a wide welcome as we worship, grow in our faith, care for others, and serve God in our community. We want to invite you to get ready for worship, so please know that in whatever space you're worshiping in, that space has become your sanctuary. If you have a candle, we want to invite you to light it now and be reminded of God's presence with you in worship. If you have an Advent wreath, you may wish to light the three candles as they're being lit as part of our worship service today. If you have a Bible with you or a Bible app on your electronic device, I want to encourage you to use it to follow along with our scripture readings. But if you don't, that's okay too. Each and every one of our scripture readings will appear on the screen. We want to know that you're here even in this virtual setting, so please take a few moments to register your attendance on the church website where you clicked into worship. Or if you're joining us on your YouTube on our YouTube channel, you can leave your information in the comment section letting us know that you're here. Now, in gratitude, let us turn our attention to worship. Welcome to worship. My name is Jenny Arneson and I serve as a lead pastor here at the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. And in this third week of Advent, we pour water into our baptismal font as we begin worship. And as the water is poured out, we are reminded that baptism offers us the peace of God, which surpasses our understanding. And this peace holds our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May we remember our baptism and be thankful. And now as we worship, May we know the peace of God that is stable and steadfast as we offer back to God our thanks and praise. It is good to worship today. Oh, come, Lord, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns the lonely exile here until I'm Hilary Lobenstein. I'm Grady Lobenstein. In an age when people struggle to find peace within themselves, and when the earth stands under the threat of annihilation, we light the candle of peace. This peace is not only the absence of war and conflict, but the full life of goodness and blessing that God intends for all. Ephesians 2, 13, 16. But not in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace in his flesh. He has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in one and himself one new humanity in the in the place of two thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to god in one body through the cross thus putting to death that hostility through it we light this candle of peace to proclaim the coming of god's presence in jesus christ remembering jesus's life and teachings we commit ourselves to work for peace and pray for peace. We will seek to be the peace we long to know and see in God's world. Let, Let us pray. pray. Eternal, Eternal God, God, 
throughout the ages, you have been peace for your people. We ask that by your presence, you would transform our lives, make us vessels of your peace, give purpose and spirit to our deeds, so that all may know life that is abundant, safe, and joy-filled, life that abides in you. We pray, remembering Jesus the Christ, the one who is our peace. Amen. Christian education, Amanda Henthorn. And you caught me in the middle of a big Christmas nap. Do you find that you get sleepy this time of year when the days are shorter and we're so busy getting ready for Christmas during this Advent season? I find that it's really important that I take time for rest and peace. And one of the things I always need before I rest is a good night lullaby. This nativity set is my son's Owen. And ever since he was little, we've had it in his room because each night before bed, it plays a Christmas lullaby. Why don't you get snuggled up somewhere comfortable and cozy right now and we'll just have a little moment of Christmas peace together. are so important. They help us calm our bodies and our hearts so that we're ready for rest. And at Christmas time, I think all of those special carols and songs that we hear are a reminder for us to find peace. Today, before we end our special time together, instead of praying a big prayer out loud, we're going to do some deep breathing together so that we can calm our bodies and get ready to find peace wherever we're worshiping today. So we're gonna breathe in and out together and then we'll end with an amen. Will you breathe with me? Breathe in and out. And in and out. And in and out. Amen. I hope all your Advent rests are peaceful and that you have lots of beautiful Christmas dreams filled with hope, peace, love, and joy. Now I'm off to take my nap. Good night, everyone. Our Advent theme this year at the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church is Stable Relationships. And in this third week of Advent, our weekly theme is Peace. 
Peace can be tricky to define. We all long for and pray for peace, but we often think of peace as an absence of hostility or fighting or war. Or we might think of peace as that long awaited peace and quiet that we want from distractions or noise. And these are all ways of describing peace. But today in our letter to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul's letter, we will hear about a different kind of peace, a different understanding of peace. The kind of peace Paul writes about is a peace that is beyond our understanding, which surpasses our understanding. It's the kind of peace that calls us to rejoice, to let our gentleness be known, and to offer all things to God in prayer. Paul presents us with this message of gospel peace that is rooted and grounded in relationships. May we open ourselves to this kind of peace that comes through trusting in Jesus the Christ, the Prince of Peace, as we hear an Advent invitation from the fourth chapter of the letter to the Philippians. And I'll be reading verses 4 to 7 and invite you to follow along. Listen now to a word of God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, may your spirit of wisdom be in our midst as we open our hearts and minds to these words of Scripture and as we hear the proclaiming of your love. In this time, may we receive the blessings that you'll bring to each one of us so that we might carry your hope, love, peace, and joy out with us into a waiting and needy world. Amen. Now that we are nearly halfway through December, have you seen it yet? Have you seen it? Have you seen the Christmas time movie classic, It's a Wonderful Life? I think it's fun to hear how many times some people have seen this movie. And for some, it just isn't Christmas without seeing the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. This year is the 75th anniversary of the movie about a downtrodden man named George Bailey who on Christmas Eve wonders what would happen if he had never been born. While the movie isn't about the Christmas story itself, the Christmas theme of something miraculous happening and the Advent themes of hope, love, peace, and joy are all there. And of course, there's an angel. His name is Clarence. Among the many themes in the movie, the lessons of community, charity, and the importance of each person, the strongest sense of this peace comes, at, comes as a peace that surpasses our understanding, like the s scripture has told us. This peace that surpasses our understanding can be seen within George Bailey by the end of the movie. Despite his circumstances, George finds peace with God, finds peace within himself, and finds peace within those in his life. Peace really is a reconciliation in our relationship with God and one another. And within ourselves, despite the circumstances of our lives, and despite what is happening in life around us, that's the kind of peace that Jesus, the Christ child, comes to bring. It's the kind of peace we are talking about in our Advent study that the Grinch cannot steal. When we find peace within ourselves, we will begin to find peace with one another and peace within the realities of life. So are you finding peace in this Advent season or are you just methodically moving toward Christmas Day? Are you anxious with all that needs to be done before Christmas? things that maybe we didn't have to get done last year at this time? Are you feeling any real sense of the hope, love, peace, and joy that we are called to bring to this season? 
In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he offers assurance that the God who formed us in peace and came among us as one of us is in our midst, is in the midst of all things and will not abandon us now or in the future. These are wonderful words of assurance and reassurance. For some, this season of the year is wonderful and exciting. They embrace the worship services, they embrace the scriptures, they embrace all the events of this season. It's the most wonderful time of the year for some. Yet for others, this season can be the worst of times. There is loneliness or grief that becomes more pronounced. And they masquerade their joy and pretend to be happy, hoping no one really notices their true emotions. The gap between happy and sad between celebration and sorrow, tends to grow wider during the Advent and Christmas season, more than at any other time of the year, it seems like. How do you sing joyous Christmas carols when you are missing a loved one? How do you express gladness when you are in the midst of medical treatments or waiting for the next test result to come back? In a season of family gatherings, how do you discover joy if you've just finalized the divorce this year. In the midst of spending in affluence, how do you celebrate when you still can't pay the rent? And what visible reason does the Apostle Paul have for rejoicing? He is writing this letter to the Philippian church from a Roman prison, and he is facing a sentence of death because of his faith. Paul is writing to the Philippian Christians who are few in number and are who also are facing persecution and injustice as Christians. The church was filled with doubt and fear in the midst of an aggressively evil environment. And in the midst of the anxiousness, the fear, and the persecution all around them, they are also struggling with dissension among themselves in the church. Like our world, the world of the Philippian Christians did not have a lot of peace in it. It was not a lot of peace in their world. Like our world, this world also was not necessarily at peace. Paul has every reason to complain, every reason to plead to God and with God for his dire circumstances and for the circumstances of his friends. But instead, he wrote, he wrote these words, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. The joy that the Apostle Paul is describing is independent of our surroundings and will persist through any and all circumstances. While we are not always free to determine the circumstances of life, we are free to choose how we will respond to those circumstances and how we will show that we care about other people's circumstances. Paul was not writing about this sense of peace that denies the painful realities of life, but instead he was talking about a peace that exists in the midst of our realities, in the midst of the realities of everyday life. It is a sense of peace not based on life being merry and bright, but rather a peace based on relationships. Not based on the environment around us, but based on people beside us. It is a peace that exceeds or surpasses our understanding, the scripture says, and helps keep our hearts and minds grounded in Christ Jesus. And sometimes it is the ordinary, everyday events or encounters that will help turn our hearts and minds toward Jesus and give us that sense of peace. When I was in seminary, I did my internship at a large United Methodist Church in Evanston, Illinois. And the size of the church building and its many ministries was such that they had two full-time maintenance workers, one that worked during the day and one that worked at night. I was in the church for a meeting one night that had followed a day that seemed like it had been full of frustrations and anxieties. And the night maintenance worker was a Hispanic man whose name was Jesus. 
spelled the same way we spell Jesus, but pronounced Jesus. And he was painting office doors that evening, and he knew that I was still in the building. So he left me a note on the wall near the church office door that he had just painted. And when I came back to the church office, the note was there, the lights were on, and the door was open. And the note he wrote said, Dear Jenny, do not close the door. And it was signed, Jesus. Or as it was spelled and as I read it, Jesus. Well, I smiled and realized that there was a larger message in that sign for me. In the midst of my frustrations and anxieties, I needed to keep the door open and once again find peace by reconnecting to my relationship with God. In Paul's letter, he teaches the Philippians and us how to face adversity. Paul's words are powerful, yet comforting, because they emphasize the gift of peace that the world cannot give nor can the world take away. This gift of peace abides in the same household as grief and anxiety. This gift visit, visits us during times of personal tragedy, visits hospice beds, visits prison cells and hospital rooms, and also visits the busyness or loneliness of another Christmas. The gift of peace arrives as did Jesus, when the people least expected it, even during the worst of times. This peace is with us because God is with us, as Emmanuel. This peace which surpasses our understanding, stretches from creation to the birth of Jesus to now. Watch as one artist depicts all of history culminating in the birth of Jesus the Christ child and offering us peace even today. Born a child 
this peace of God as Emmanuel has always been with us. Creation is grounded in peace. We are created in peace. And God longs for us to know this peace that is there for all people. All people to find, to see, to hold, to have, and to share. May it be so for each of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we continue in worship, we are mindful that when we give of our gifts, they work through the ministries of this congregation to not only work within the church, but out in our communities and around our world to make God's love tangible for all people. You may make your gift in several different ways. You can click the donate button on our church website and give electronically, or you can continue to mail your offering to the church, or if you're coming past the church during the week, you can drop it in our church mailbox. But we do continue to thank you for your generosity and your stewardship as we continue to share ministry together in our community and in our world. And each week we show you pictures to tell a little bit about our story, to celebrate our ministry, and to show you a little bit about what our offerings are going to support. And today we have pictures of our confirmation class during our weekly classes. And this year we have 20 confirmation students and 20 mentors. And we share ministry and we share classes together each Wednesday. So thank you for how your offerings continue to support the, the stewardship of our youth and our growing in our spiritual life together in our youth ministries like confirmation. Thank you. And now we do take time to be able to offer our prayers. We always remind you that you can make a prayer request by going to our church website and clicking the prayer request button. Or you can call the church office or email Laura in the church office and we'll make sure we lift your prayers in worship and send them out over our prayer chain. And then each week we are praying for and offering our thanks for a different organization within Sun Prairie. And in this coming week we are offering our thanks for the Sun Prairie Cards Closet. And this is located on Main Street right next to the Sunshine Place. And they accept uh, gently used clothes which go to students in Sun Prairie. So thank you for donations that you're able to make to the Sun Prairie Clothes Closet. Other prayers that I want to be able to lift to you today. I would invite our prayers for one of our children, Kenzie Newell. She's in fifth grade, and she's had some serious surgery this past week at UW Children's Hospital. And the surgery went well, but it's going to be a long recovery for her, and she'll spend some extended time in the hospital. So prayers for Kenzie and for her family. 
Marsha Johnson continues to recover from her ruptured aneurysm. She's been in the UH, uh, UW Rehab Hospital, but she's getting to go home next week, and so that will be a, a great step for Marsha. But she thanks us for our prayers and for the cards and letters that have come her way. So we, uh, we rejoice in her recovery and continue to pray for her, her good healing. Sally DeNice will be having a heart procedure coming up on Monday, and so we would ask for your prayers for Sally. She's 92 years old, and uh, of course there's always a little anxiety around any medical procedure, but our prayers for Sally. Bonnie Elmquist asks for our prayers. She's been having some ongoing health issues and asks for our continued prayers. Julie Marshall asks for our prayers for her daughter, Dory. She and her family recently received five foster children. They do foster care, and so they received five children. And so prayers for their good strength and, and wisdom as they care for these children. Karen Andrusco Drusco asked for our prayers for her nephew. Uh, in diagnosing something else, uh, her, their ne her nephew was diagnosed with an aneurysm that they are working to take care of. He had some surgery this last week, so our prayers for his healing. Well, now we do take time to be in prayer, to be able to connect with God, to lift our own prayers to God, and to be able to share our prayers as a faith community, no matter where we are gathered. So I invite us to be in a time of silent prayer, and then I will offer us words of prayer, and I invite us to share together in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. God of peace, in this Advent season of holy anticipation, hear us as we come to you in this time of prayer. We need your peace more than ever, within ourselves and for our world. We pray for the kind of peace that moves through us and beyond ourselves to make a difference in life around us. You created us to be people of awe and wonder, who look around our lives and discover your presence everywhere bringing light and life to everything. Shield us from becoming so wrapped up in the struggles of life that we shut you out and lose sight of the deep peace that comes from sharing your love with others. In these growing days of Advent, O oh God, we ask for a measure of your patience. When everything around us is speeding up, and yet we are called to continue to wait for your coming among us. As you dare to come to dwell here on earth, May we respond by being the ones who give ourselves in your service. Gracious God, we know how often our actions and attitudes bring anxiety instead of peace, and how we foster fear when we might express mercy. So we pray for peace in our lives, our homes, our cities, our country, our world, and within our hearts, that all may come to know the promise of your goodness. Show us your peace, O oh God, that surpasses our understanding. Prepare our hearts and minds and lives in these days ahead as we receive the Christ child with hope and love and peace and joy. We pray in the name and spirit of the Prince of Peace who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our worshiping community today. We hope that this service has inspired you in your life of faith and that you'll want to respond by putting your faith into action. We have several ways for you and your family to do this. First of all, we want to encourage you to head over to our church website at sunprairieumc.org and see what's happening in the life of our church. Browse around to find the ways that you can serve and stay connected and get involved in our church family. I especially want to invite you to head over to our worship page on our church website we will be able to see all of our different Advent ministry offerings that are leading up to our Christmas Eve worship services. You may also read or listen to our daily Advent devotional from our website, 
or you can hear it on our podcast channel each and every day. If you don't already receive our weekly Thursday email that outlines what's happening in the life of our church or our Monday devotional word of the week, I want to encourage you to contact our church office so that we can get you on those email distribution lists. Our second annual live nativity will take place this coming Saturday from 5.30 to 7.30 in the evening outside our church building. Grab your family, hop in the car, and sip a hot beverage as you view the scenes that recount the events that led up to Jesus' miraculous birth in the manger. Once again, this Christmas Eve, we'll be passing the light of Christ in our online Christmas Eve worship service. Please contact Director of Worship Production, Denise Utter, for more information about how to record and submit your video. And now as we leave worship, may we walk the path of peace with our hearts open to receive peace and our hands open to offer peace as we share the love of our Creator God, the redeeming grace of Christ, and the sustaining strength of the Holy Spirit. May we have the courage to live in these days as God's thankful people. Amen.